Right, now let's move on to our next session, which is includes a, a short presentation first from David Brockman from the VBA and then into our third and final panel session for the conference. So I will hand over to David for his introduction and then we'll come back and introduce the panellists and get going on that panel session. Thank you, David. Thanks, Bron, and um, hopefully this slide will be coming up uh, very shortly. And uh, hopefully everybody can see that. So um, thank you, everybody. Pleasure to be here today. And thanks, Bronwyn, and to the panel participants in advance for um, what I'm sure is going to be a terrific panel discussion. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're all gathered today, um, paying my respects to elders, both past and present, and elders from other communities who may be with us here today as well. Uh, this morning, I'm going to be giving an overview of the Code of Conduct uh, nearly 15 months in now, uh, with a focus on how the VBA oversees compliance, uh, the steps that we've taken to assist in its implementation, the code issues that are giving rise to potential breaches, and uh, those areas that practitioners should be alert to, uh, given their importance in promoting compliant building work. So how have we supported the Code of Conduct implementation? Well, basically through a number of steps. Uh, from its commencement, uh, the focus of the VBA was on delivering an educative approach designed to support practitioners. Uh, the State Building Surveyor, Andrew Cellini, wrote to all surveyors announcing the development and gazettal of the code, with separate correspondence following that highlighting the importance of independence and not accepting appointments where surveyors have been involved in any aspect of the building design. Uh, a panel webinar led by Andrew was held in November 2020 uh, that featured representatives from private and municipal building surveyors reflecting on the content of the code and those areas that would need to be a focus for practitioners. Uh, the session foreshadowed the eight principles uh, in the Code of Conduct uh, and its intent to promote confidence in the role of surveyors as custodians of safe buildings, acknowledging the complex environment that surveyors work within. Uh, the VBA delivered training aimed at providing guidance in respect of those areas that we recognise as potentially challenging. Uh, a targeted webinar explaining the importance of issuing compliant enforcement instruments uh, pointed surveyors to an updated suite of VBA templates designed to make that process simpler. Uh, as we heard from Andrew earlier on, a dedicated site and inspection uh, enforcement webinar facilitated by Bronwyn uh, was delivered in May 2021, attended by over 1,100 participants and a follow-up session a couple of months later, uh, attended by 900. And uh, finally, a session on complaints and conflict resolution, which was hosted by former New South Wales Deputy Ombudsman uh, Chris Wheeler, provided guidance on why effective complaint handling is vital to anyone delivering a service to members of the public and how to handle situations of conflict. So how do we, we monitor compliance? Well, we monitor compliance with the code as part of our regular inspection, audit and complaint handling functions. Uh, the principles and rules in the code are based on conduct that promotes public safety and competence in the industry, um, and our oversight activities are similarly focused on those matters. Commonly, proactive inspections and building audits will prompt the VBA to write to the surveyor and also the builder to flag potential issues of non-compliance and to seek a response within a specified time frame. Practitioners are typically given more than one opportunity to provide a response and where a response is still not received uh, or where the potential breach is regarded as a serious one, uh, the matter will be referred for assessment as a potential complaint. Sometimes identified non-compliance and breaches of the code of conduct uh, can be managed through the provision of an educative letter. Um, on fewer occasions where the breach is more serious, escalation to a VBA investigation may be the outcome. So what have we seen? Well, to date, the most frequent breaches of the Code of Conduct have been observed from statutory instruments such as building orders and directions to fix, uh, which have been submitted to the VBA by building surveyors who have quite rightly been trying to meet their other obligations under the Building Act. And we certainly don't wish to discourage that. We absolutely encourage the submission of those instruments to us. And we've put in place uh, fast track processes now to carry things through like uh, directions to fix and failure to notify of uh, mandatory inspections uh, through to discipline for the builders involved. 
The Code of Conduct requires at Clause 2.5 that when performing statutory functions, surveyors must ensure that all decisions and resulting enforcement actions are reasonable, fair and appropriate. And 2.5.3 goes on to require that surveyors must make every effort to ensure that both the content and the service of any such instruments are correct. Uh, unfortunately, around half of the building orders and around two thirds of directions to fix referred to the VBA by building surveyors uh, are currently deemed non-enforceable. Um, some of the key reasons for that are uh, directions in a building order not matching the detail in the preceding building notice, incorrect references to legislation, uh, directions to fix being used for matters other than directing building work, for example, uh, requesting amendments to documentation, uh, and also failing to specify uh, particular building work to be carried out in some of those directions as well. In such circumstances, the, the uh, surveyor is directed to the VBA's updated enforcement templates for future use. Um, and we also offer a follow-up conversation with one of our technical advisors just to talk through in more detail uh, why we were unable to enforce those instruments. Uh, the next most frequent source of code of conduct breaches actually relates to non-response. Uh, principle seven of the code of conduct requires a building surveyor uh, must communicate promptly with uh, their client, the VBA and relevant parties and that not responding to correspondence from those parties uh, promptly or within a reasonable time frame um, are examples of inappropriate conduct set out in the code. Um, now we understand that the role of the surveyor is a challenging one. You're dealing with multiple parties on a number of fronts. Um, and so uh, ultimately, while the bulk of building surveyors are responsive to the VBA, uh, we do see a good level of compliance from the majority. Um, unfortunately, we also see some regular examples of surveyors failing to respond to information requests um, from us through our inspection or audit programs, um, despite two or even three follow-ups on some occasions. Uh, and such circumstances will then prompt assessment by the VBA's complaints team and uh, either the issuing of an educational advice to the surveyor outlining the contravention um, and providing the opportunity to rectify any business processes which may lead to that reoccurring um, or a referral on for a complaint if it's a more serious matter. Importantly, where the builders fail to respond to the VBA in such circumstances, um, we'll generally issue a caution to them noting a contravention of Regulation 265 um, of the building regs for failing to perform work as a practitioner in a competent manner and to a professional standard. Uh, and if we see repeated examples of that from builders, uh, that will actually prompt a referral by the VBA through to our discipline area for more serious attention. So what are the opportunities for improvement? Well, positively, as I've mentioned, most building surveyors demonstrate a good level of compliance with the code. And most areas for improvement that we've identified are actually easily remedied. Uh, ensuring that enforcement instruments are issued in the correct form can be addressed with a revisit of the VBA's training webinars and the use of the VBA's enforcement templates. Where the VBA asks for information on matters of non-compliant building work, ensuring a timely and fulsome response will prevent further escalation and save both you and the authority time. The VBA observes other matters from consumer complaints too. Principle 8 requires surveyors to provide a complaint handling process and address issues of non-compliance raised with them. Uh, the code details that a building surveyor must take reasonable steps to minimise the potential for complaints and have a process in place to address problems or issues of non-compliance brought to their attention as soon as possible. Uh, on some occasions, the VBA receives reports that building surveyors have failed to respond to clients or to other parties such as adjoining owners. And this can simply serve to escalate issues, notwithstanding we understand that uh, obviously you do have a number of parties that you're regularly in communication with um, and the volume of those communications can become a challenge. What the Chris Wheeler uh, webinar highlighted that was how the complaint is handled is as important as the outcome. And that is to say, uh, if a complainant feels that they've been treated fairly and with courtesy and that they've had a responsive experience, they're far more likely to accept an outcome, even if it's unfavorable to them. Uh, and with no effective complaint handling process in place, handling complaints becomes more time consuming, stressful and expensive for you and your businesses. Less frequently, the VBA identifies more serious breaches. Uh, some of these include failing to put the safety of the community above the needs of an individual client, um, for example, by not providing for protection works where they should be um, provided for, uh, performing work outside the scope of expertise and experience, um, or accepting an appointment where there is a clear conflict or a perceived conflict. 
These types of matters are usually not suitable for an educative letter, of course, and will result in a referral for investigation um, and potential discipline. So next steps for the VBA, well, going forward, we're taking a number of, of steps to respond to compliance issues and to further support surveyors through targeted education, enhancement of the surveyor audit program and updates of our technical resources. Uh, as Andrew mentioned earlier on, an enforcement webinar part of our practitioner education series is to be delivered on the 28th of April and will be tailored to address main concerns surrounding compliance issues with the code of conduct. And of course, having regard to the surveyor code of conduct one year in, including its successes and some of those areas of improvement that we've identified, the VBA will be moving forward with the development of codes of conduct for other building practitioners. So they were the matters that I wanted to cover off on today. Um, thanks very much for listening. And Bronwyn, I'll now hand back to you to commence the panel session.